I'm Grace Vandenberg. Thank you for joining me again for yet another topic covering the building blocks and how to prepare yourself to become an author. The much waited and asked for topic, how to build confidence. And like many of you may recollect from social media, I told you all in good time. It had its time, moment and place. Until now, I've covered quite a few topics and all of which I always try to emphasize, emphasize and seed a little bit of nugget of information, a very important piece of information, and that was preparing yourself for the outcome of becoming a published author. And I pride myself on these podcasts of covering topics that other people may not, covering topics that many people might not even think about, when writing the first word of their debut novel, or their second novel, or the third novel, it really doesn't matter. What matters is the preparation before your work was into the, the public domain. And I started this way from experience. Experience of knowing how critical it could be, and how upsetting and heart-destroying. And I only wish that back when I first started out, somebody had warned or forewarned me of what I could potentially face. Today is the modern world. It's 2022, believe it or not. We have a lot of access and people have a lot of access to us, our lives, our private lives, whether we like it or not. And I'm an extremely private person, so I just like it more than most. And with that is a trap. With all of that access, we are open to a lot of criticism, fair and unfair, mostly unfair and mostly always biased and unfounded. And that is why I wanted to start with the mental preparation. Like most people who will write a book will start with a structure. I didn't want to start with a structure and start you off with how we lay out and design chapter one, page one, the margins, the font, the, the size of font. They're all secondary. That will come with the experience. You'll learn that. That's easy. We're all human beings and it doesn't matter how strong a person may be or insist. I'm afraid confident and strong person and I live in my own positivity Not, nothing anybody says means anything to me but as human beings it's ultimately we are going to have bad days and as much as we can repel and beat off what is actually being aimed at us whether it's justified or biased and on base and baseless it doesn't matter, there will be a day until we run through the ringer and bounce on the waves of experience. It will get to us. Sometime it will. And that is so imperative to prepare before you even really truly begin. And you might not think right now, well, she's going on and on and on about this. It's really important. Can we get to how we can structure a book? But trust me, I promise you, I guarantee you, by the time you finish your first novel, or whatever novel it might be, and it's in the public domain, you're going to refer back to this and thank me, I can assure you. I only wish somebody had forewarned me, honestly, because what I went through was unbearable. And I don't want the same for you. So I want to give you the full transparent truth, the possibilities the good, the bad, and everything in between. So let's get started. How to build confidence. Your number one tool to succeeding in any part of your life. Confidence is a skill and ability, just like any other learnable skill and ability. Not everyone in this world was born and automatically knows how to operate a computer. Not everyone who was born was born into the world when computers are being invented. When I was growing up, People were only starting to bring computers into their home. Not everyone had access or could afford the internet. Back then, you were billed on how much time you spent on it, opposed to a monthly subscription. 
Yes, confidence is the number one tool, but the number one realization, foundation, and this is what I'm giving to you. It's fundamental to have a foundation to build upon, like any type of architecture. But this journey is not the same for everyone. Crucial mistake: most of us make looking to others for validation and to tell us what we're good at. When I was younger, I decided what I wanted to do with my life to avoid making mistakes and falling flat on my face, so I wouldn't have or to have to hear more degrading, soul-destroying criticism. Avoid being laughed at, ganged up on, outnumbered, name-called, labelled, humiliated, and mocked. Not realizing back in the day that mess-ups were life's own little way of teaching us crucial lessons, and what perceived people perceived as failures was actually education, and that is the only ever a good thing. It doesn't feel like it at the time, I know, but on the other side of it. Is crystal clear. Often we need these lessons to get us to the next stage in life. Often I've learned that the harsher lessons while you're on the bottom are only a fraction of what you'll face when you're on top. Make no mistake or misunderstanding. To climb out of the past can be tough, depending on what you faced and survived. But getting to the top is tougher. Tougher yet is sustaining that success. Remember that saying, "One hit wonder." Don't be that. I want for my gracious eccentrics to make it to the top if you're starting out, and to remain on top regardless of your status right now. All it takes is constant reevaluation of self and mindfulness of which parts of self you need to better. Nothing is a constant. What best served you last year or last project might not be what best serves you today or tomorrow or next year. As the world evolves, we must evolve with it. Remember to always and forever become an adventurer for facts, intelligence, education, mindfulness. Without all these traits, you to your character, success will be unlikely, unattainable. So messing up is not something to feel embarrassed about; it's something to be embraced. In time, it creates self-confidence and character because, consequently, you will develop self-assurance. It will be the mirror to your soul, showing you if you're on the right path, and if you are, it will force you to face your reality, asking a question from you. What exactly are you prepared to do to make change? How far are you prepared to walk in the dark alone until you get to where you want to be? Will you give in or will you carry on? Making each and every one of our, us gracious eccentricities entities of substance. What kinds of things knocked my confidence? Well, growing up. My looks, lack of according to others, attractiveness as a whole, body shape and size, normal for the most part of my teenage girls, but unfortunately, my experience would be one of the most extreme cases. As a result, I have been sick for many years, suffering from eating disorders, other things such as skin, makeup, fashion, popularity, or lack of. Living in the right part of town, increasing personal wealth, acquiring the right goal in a speedy, prompt time, according to others, if not labeled a failure. Even just being generally liked, likable, being relentlessly criticized—not the kind of criticism designed to shake you up and awaken you to your greatest potential. But the unhealthy, inflammatory kind designed to destroy your very soul. That was both at home and school. Instead, left to feel like there's nothing right about you, that everything is your fault, including other people's failings and lack of effort into themselves, their life and future, being force-fed other people's negativity until you take on their persona, opinions, and energy. As your own, because it's all you know. Doesn't that sound about right? Even in part, do you resonate? 
If you do, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry for everyone who's ever stolen a part of you because they could. Malice, cruelty, bitterness, resentment, their own personal resentment for their own failings. I'm sorry it took so long for you to wake up and smell the daisies because you should never have been made to feel lesser than you are. You should, you should have been loved enough to have been lifted and appreciated. But today is a new day. Today is your day. The past is the past, where it belongs. Today is your now, the moment of truth, the moment you're faced with a choice. Choose to dwell in the pain and the upset, the negativity. Or, or, choose to steal back what was originally and rightfully yours. Life, hope, happiness, aspirations, passion, appreciation, love, care, confidence. Self-care, self-love, self-confidence. I remember even when I do good in life. I was never told how well I've done. That anyone was proud of me. Instead, continue to have my weakness pointed out in a cruel, unforgivable way. To self grandiose those who were, in effect, taking the time to damage me instead of taking the time to cure themselves. That, my dear gracious eccentricities, is a portrait of uneducated waste of spacers whose future can easily call. It won't shine as bright as yours if you step away and leave them behind. That's what they're scared of. When you're gone, there won't be anyone around weak enough for them to manipulate and control. It's a disease you can't cure. It's their disease. It's a, it's a disease you can choose to walk away from. The greatest and everlasting lesson I will be internally grateful to. Remember, things like makeup, hairstyle, fashion, cool, and hip brands, and the cost of something, these things will not last forever. They're interchangeable like people the wrong people, I've learned from a very young age not to fall victim to this. If you don't fall, follow a crowd, depending on where you're located, it could make you a target of bullying, harassment. When it's the wrong crowd, that can sometimes include family members. You have to make the decision what kind of life you really want. What kind of life do you really deserve? Do you want it or do you want to only ever procrastinate and dream about it if you want it? If you want to feel it, smell it, have it, enjoy it, live it, then you must, must, must make it happen. No one else will do it for you. At this point, you need to learn your value. This is the point in life I learned to place value on everyone around me, not to say others don't have worth or value. But that worth and value do have, they have to you and in your life. In other words, it's prioritizing. At the core of your value is you, meaning who you are, what you represent. Learn to redefine the word selfish as well as the word confidence. They're married in unison. Take your life and your time. Life and time you'll never get back. Bear in mind and focus it on the things and people that matter. Who and what brings you satisfaction and earthly joy. And spiritual contentment. Render the unimportant people, the na name callers, malice, gossips and liars, immature at any and all ages. The naysayers powerless by reclaiming your power and transforming some element in you and your life that you feel is lacking in each work. Self-evaluate. Place the time you steal back and invest it into yourself and your transformational power. You are your greatest, most valuable commodity. Bullies are only as powerful as you permit them to be. Make them null and void. I'm not talking about physical harm, but words. Lies, spreading lies and disparaging you. <laughs> We've all had them, guys. We have all been there. It's about now 
What do you do with it? Where do you go? What is your direction? I remember I grew up the whole sticks and stones can break your bones, but words will never harm me. Tripe. Teacher would rattle this off as if it were the answer to everything. As if cruelty was that simply forgotten, that easily forgotten, that it didn't seep into the fibres of your existence and being. That you didn't take it on. That it didn't mould you into what you were, would thus become. Fools they were back then. Doctors have proven words can be the most dangerous weapon. A total load of BS. Words and lies have the ability to hurt, damage and destroy. My fundamental pet hate is when people name call and are racist or discriminated. Belittle in some way, and then you place the rightful label on them for what their actions and words merit, and even go as far as to supply your supported arguments. They don't like it. Then they attempt to reverse the tables and shift the blame onto you or others. Ever been discriminated? I have three times in my life. Why? My accent. It wasn't harsh enough. It was too less or too that. I was from the wrong country, and my accent represented that. Those who didn't have a large bank account balance but put on fake accents to sound upper class without bringing the class, I might add, call you sensitive. Yet the law would call discrimination of any kind a crime. But you're too sensitive to take in their insult the way it was intended because they don't like the label associated to what they've done. The cheek of it, the sheer impotence. Instead of wasting your life on those pitiful fools who will still be doing the same things in ten years' time, as they have always been doing, unlike you, my gracious eccentricities, you'll be living your best life and laughing in hysteria, enjoying success. The fruits of your labour... Transport your time, effort, dedication and investment to you, to the things that matter, your future, your moment in time, happiness, education, business, family, mental health, fitness and well-being, to name but a few. Biggest, biggest lesson of all time for me. The beauty of confidence in comparisons to tangible things, possessions and objects. Confidence, once you've acquired it, it won't let you down. People can let you down. Business can let you down if the people you have faith in are failing you. But if you have the fortitude to invest time, effort, hope and passion into yourself from today and every day moving forward, confidence will never fleet. It will be your greatest warrior when called upon, your most reliable, steadfast friend. Because you became stronger, once you're not dependent on others to tell you who you are, and develop the ability, skill to go on your own way, you'll change your mindset, and that in turn will change how good you feel this will ultimately lead you to the path of change, changing your dreams, being daring, taking risks like every entrepreneur on planet Earth. Nothing changes when it's coasting. Nothing changes when it's easy. You have to sweat to create change. You have to elevate your blood pressure, your anxiety levels, and re release various different chemicals into the body. Think exercise until you heat your body up. The heart rate elevates, the burn creeps into the muscles, and the tendons tear. Your soft body won't transform into something lean, sculpted, and strong. As in anatomy, everything is the same. Push boundaries. Although, as, it, as in all things in life, it might not come right away. And it shouldn't. What was that? Did I hear her correctly? What part of hardship is good? In fact, hardship is the best thing to create and carve persons' character. A tough climb to the top 
makes you appreciate all the waves you've rowed and all the rocks you've bounced into. Success should be brutal, at least at first. It teaches you value, the value of money, beautiful po possessions, abilities, capabilities, thought process, the value of effort, trying, tenacity, dedication, appreciation of self, hard work, work ethic, getting up and doing. The list is endless of what can be derivative from positivity, which breeds confidence, and confidence which breeds everything wondrous. Ultimately, the appreciation and value of how far you've come when you've made it. When you have to fight a little harder, learn a little more, give and take a little bit more for something that also becomes your best life experience. That becomes your inspiration and in turn, other people's inspiration who can learn from you and follow your footsteps. Adding to you and creating confidence, it makes you independent, independently minded, strong-willed. It makes you comfortable in your own skin. Wake up and smell the lilies. Strong-willed is a force to be reckoned with. You will never be manipulated again, hopefully, or less likely to be manipulated. And that's a strength and aspiration in itself. Not everyone is going to like you, but you don't need everybody to like you. You need to like you. So start liking yourself. Start respecting yourself, appreciating yourself, investing in yourself. Start liking yourself over trying to make people who don't matter like you and cry and fret about how to try harder to achieve their attentions and friendships. Be your own best friend. Life doesn't need to be that painful. Allow things to occur and happen naturally. Rendering the wrong effort from crippling your emotions. If people don't want to like you or get to know you and decide to make rash judgments, often based on nothing, often based on hearsay, often based on misguided misconceptions. It's not worth wasting your life trying to change their mind. Why? Because some people are happy being judgmental and you can be rest assured if that is their personality, they're being that way with others and no matter what you say or do, it will never change their mind. Often that means they'd have to admit They've made a mistake. Most people can't do that. It's literally not in their makeup and DNA. They see admitting something they've done wrong as weakness that will sooner live their li entire life lying to save face. Then there's always those who have vast opinions of, of themselves and everyone around them is beneath them. Their minds won't be changed either. Bottom line, ask yourself the question. If these people possess these traits, are they really the type of people you want to be friends with, within, within any rate? Do you really want to surround yourself with that aura, their aura? Are they the kind of people you'd be able to trust? Do they inspire you, encourage you, make you feel great about yourself and your upcoming and future projects? Your best mission in life is to protect yourself you and your family, and all the people safe to have around you. If not, why are you wasting your time willfully? You're choosing to waste your time. Stop. Stop today. It's the exact same thing as taking a briefcase of cash and throwing it out the window of a car moving car, and the next day you can't afford to eat, or next month you can't afford to rent. Senseless. It's because money is tangible. We can see it, touch it, use it. Time, on the other hand, is intangible. Intangible things are given much less value. This is wrong. Because time is all we've got. And we all have a limited amount of it. After all, it's all the intangible time that accumulates to a, to a life. And in, every, and in the very end, your deathbed, that will have the greatest value of all. I've talked a lot about confidence itself, 
the biography, how to build confidence. I moved and changed my unhealthy negative deceit environment. That gave me freedom to experiment. I, re I read and educated myself, becoming self-educated. It doesn't matter if you have a degree in law or you're financially secure. You need to keep educating yourself. I became curious about many things that spoke to me. Stop being lazy. You're not a teenager any longer. There's no excuse, perhaps not even then. Take charge. Emotions and reactions are within your power. Of your time management, direction, daily tasks. Plan ahead. Be organized. Learn to be organized. Say you wanted to start a business, research into what you need to do and be able to be successful to do this. Take notes, lots of notes. Keep a journal to keep your mindset and thoughts straight. Change your mindset. Learn how to discard the things people say that are designed to be scathing. Practice your composure, remaining cool, your posture. Listen, whether we like it or not, there's bad people out there in that world, people who enjoy creating trouble, who enjoy taking you down. That's the world we live in, and too often we wake up to find it by, by strangers on the other end of the world who we've never met and will never meet, who felt the desire to be a keyboard warrior and take pieces of you, become a drama-free zone, declutter the drama and become a drama-free zone. I cannot ring that home enough. I have a very, very, very little drama in my life. This didn't happen by accident. I didn't just suddenly have good luck because the stars above aligned. I took great effort to cultivate the peace I have found now. I have found now, but built for myself. It took work, daily application. Peace is just like success. It takes effort to acquire. It takes the want for, for it to happen. You have to want it. The need to drown out all the unimportant voices of doom and gloom and despair. But it can be done. To acquire this, I've had to become every ounce as relentless as the aggressors. It's basically the same thing. Just rule reversal and different tactics. Apply effort in all that you do. Want something. Bad enough and you will always find a way. Spend a lot of time alone to get to know yourself. Reacquaint yourself with you. Ask yourself, who do I want to be? Am I there yet? If it's beneath the surface, all you might even need to do is unveil it. Listen to the music you love most, even if it's the uncool music of your, your friends might judge you on and laugh at you for, and watch movies you enjoy, read for education and leisure. Reinvent yourself to who you want to be, all this and more gives you freedom, and in freedom we can exist and roam the cobbled streets of life without overthinking, torture, hopelessness or worry. Confidence is a gift you give to yourself. It's not a gift that is wrapped up with paper and bows and given. It's the greatest gift and it's free. Bottom line, live your life for you. Infest in yourself every day. Nobody else matters more than you. This is Grace Vandenberg. Until next time. My gracious eccentricities.